My name is Ed Piskor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. And we're going to take a look at this poster book full of Katsuhiro Otomo artwork from uh, his entire career. Uh, you know, we did Akira Club recently, got a lot of feedback where people were like, can you guys please look at something that we can actually go out and buy and not have to mortgage the house? This is the book uh, that, that is out there uh, that's reasonably accessible. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download zines and PDFs of my drawings, uh, drawing collections that are out of print. You can also find process stuff, original art. You can see how I make comics I make, like Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, all of that and a lot more on my Patreon at Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tom, here's a book that's still accessible. Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics from 10 Speed Press, a division of Penguin Random House. Story of Jack Kirby's life told in pencil form. Uh, and here's Fantastic Four Grand Design. It's my take on Jack Kirby's masterpiece, The Fantastic Four. I tell their whole story uh, from start to finish in, in one volume. And there, I also have a YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild completed the first season of uh, Red Room, the anti-social network. You're seeing multiple issues, but don't you worry, because each issue is completely self-contained. So if you see an issue, scoop it up, give it a read, you're going to get a complete experience. And if you read subsequent issues, you'll just get a better understanding of the universe that I'm constructing here. This is the latest issue, very EC-inspired uh, in, in many ways, down to the, the font usage. Uh, you can get these comics at your local comic shop, but they are going fast. Uh, hit up the Fantagraphics website if you don't have a good shop nearby. Or go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiskor. Uh, the free comic book day comic is available as a PDF up there for free. Uh, or plop down three bucks for the archive. Have over 150 pages worth of comics up there. And we are into serializing, I don't know, a sixth issue uh, at this point. Uh, link tree in the description below this video to get to all of those links. Katsuhiro Otomo, one of the great comic book storytellers, but to be a great comic book storyteller, you don't necessarily need academic uh, drawing chops, per se. You know, a lot of good comics out there with some pretty rough uh, drawing. It just turns out that he's also a unicorn when it comes to uh, actual design, so we're going to look at a bunch of posters from his entire career that really show off the fact that this guy can just draw his ass off. We're off to a great start. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, the I was end looking papers. at admiring just the sketches S of these things. So much different uh, media. This is, is an episode used. to watch. I feel like we do different episodes, interviews, and things. Sometimes you could get away with just the audio. This is for your eyeballs. Yes. Big career, you know, movies. Uh, he, he did ad campaigns and things. Uh, a lot of Akira work, of course, man. And, like, you look at something like this. You don't even know what the medium is. Is this acrylic? Like, what the fuck? And there's probably airbrush on the background to get that perfect. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. Can you think of a more iconic image? Mm -hmm. A very prolific guy, too. You know, whenever you think about... He's, he's got a few of these comics that, that have come out in English, but super prolific. A lot of stuff that's never been translated, and then... I mean, mountains of, of, of work that go into the works that we have access to. At a certain point, he has to go, I'm never drawing this ever well, again. I was going to say, talk about iconic. Every single one of these things is iconic. And looking at it with this color treatment, it's like the uh, poster for Alien. Mm, you're right, man. When you see this, Tom, don't you hear Leonardo's voice? Yeah. yeah. I had that poster. <laughs> and then here, again, like I've ripped this off. Oh, you know? amazing. <laughs> sure. When you see the... Uh, the um, behind the scenes video for the making of Akira and you see those poor bastards with that single haired brush on a stylus so that they can keep it straight and just plunk down the littlest dab of paint for the illumination in the window. When you think of how much has changed in animation, it's almost like you might be able to argue Akira is what pushed some of those changes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I feel like this is a little bit of that Jim Rugg approach, man, where you take a small image and then graphically blow it up for uh, some for some effect. It's neat. It almost looks like photocopy, uh -huh. the way the, the dark of the hair is all busted up and it, noisy. It, Mimeograph. It, it, no, it looks like it was like copied... Xeroxed from the fucking printed manga because that is yes. unmistakably that shitty printing that I yeah just all these like bubbles I yeah. love that you give me credit for that by the way <laughs> <laughs> I certainly have stolen that from a lot of other people before a great artist steal nice close up of uh, some of this work man look at this painting Jesus 
And it's for stuff like, uh, he did like a different piece of artwork for so much stuff like soundtracks or the laser disc of well, Akira. All the different release, like international releases too. You know, I have international poster books and they'll, they'll highlight like one or two movies where it's like 40 posters, you know, from all the different countries where the movie was released. I love when you get into some of these other yeah. color schemes. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to me to see like manga artists when they do color work. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> the Tangled Mind. It's so funny. That this like it's such a weird image. Like I've had this book forever and I've stared at this a million times and it's like I don't like this guy this guy who does everything so perfectly and there's just it's just I don't know, it's just wrong, but it's you know, it's iconic again. That's interesting you say that, man. It just like it it looks like just like bad painting or something. You know what I mean? Like like I don't know, like it it stands out to me. His idea is warm color, cool color, western color. And I'm guessing western color is like the sy synonymous for dumb. <laughs> <laughs> for like stupid. <laughs> Oafish. I saw a thing on color theory recently and they were talking about ratios when you're using complementary colors and how it's all different and I can't remember them now, but for instance like, you know, blue and blue and orange, it would be like 25% orange and, you know, 75% blue. On that second cover for the Tangle Bar, there was that one little splash of red on the on the jacket. I love this kind of stuff too. That just feels you know, like I love advertising and that feels yeah. so much like advertising. Right. These images would be reappropriated from those front pages uh within Young Magazine that would introduce the strip. Like, each of these is from mm -hmm. a different one, inclu including this piece. This is that uh, iconic, like, first cover. It would have been pixelated in an in a interesting way. And Otomo, like, admitting, like, is it Akira? Is it Kaneda? Right. I'm starting something new. Right, and yeah. And it's going to revolve around a scary fucking kid. Mm -hmm. Speaking of scary, like, that's a pretty cool effect for what you're describing. Yeah, anytime you, like, invert... You get some pretty like wild, otherworldly effects. You boys know we're gonna have to do volume five soon, right? Sure. Yeah, it's 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 an inevitability. It really feels like that's what we're building up. To. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, stuff. that's pretty exciting. Yeah, in in uh, the Akira Club book, he was talking about like getting this up on. A t but see, this is pixelated weird. Yeah, too. and it's got the yeah the like the that's interlacing. Not just, and yeah, stuff. so it's so it's got digitized and is a photograph of a screen. It's both things. Mm -hmm. How? How did they do that? Yeah, I wish I had more to uh, more insight. You know, it's just such a pleasure to look at this stuff. Right. Wow. Yeah, see, like, yeah, don't know that I've ever seen that. Wow, that's really cool. And the upside down component is a choice. You see, you didn't know that uh, Katsuhiro Otomo did a Supreme cover for Rob Light. <laughs> but, but, but now you know. <laughs> that's spectacular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so hard to make something like that lunar surface really pop. I mean, that's the only element, you know, it's it's 85% of what we see here, and it's gorgeous. Like, I can be looking at craters over here and be happy for a while. Absolutely, man. It's that thing that we were talking about, looking at, like, uh, you know, McFarland stuff, where now you get a zoom in on a hand, and how do you make that thing interesting, and where do you apply, you know, some shading and detail and stuff? The only difference is this feels pretty accurate. It's starting to get into uh, epic comics. Yeah, and it feels very like '80s movie poster. Like, look I'm, at that. All of it, you know. Like, it's such a fun pose. It's it's that that's your Western kind of pose. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what he meant by Western, like 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 the Wild West or like no like, like American. Western like American. Like a, like so European. is it like 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 the double lighting where it must be something? Is that, like that it? That. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I feel like if it. you're coming out of the '80s, that that was something that was popular in like '80s films. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, like a Tony Scott. Yeah, kind totally. Of thing. I was thinking Miami Vice. So, yeah, yeah. Here it is, man. Uh, the magnetic rose, man. Memories. The the anime, and uh, <laughs> I think the name of their ship was called the Corona. So you just can't escape it. You can't escape it. See, that's that. That's one of those time things where a big enough event has ripples that go in the past. <laughs> right. One of those. Uh, Iconic images, man. Jim, you gotta get off those uh, conspiracy theory websites. <laughs> You're going down a rabbit hole. That's like that's that's uh, physics, isn't it? Steam Boy. Or as Mobius said, I really like that Metropolis movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
These are very beautiful images, too. This was that era, too, man, where it's like you saw Otomo's name on something, couldn't wait for this to go to your Hollywood video. I tried to watch it two, three times, never got through it. He has it's big got ideas. all the ingredients. He has big ideas, and I think he just can't can't nail it down. Or it's perhaps like the the idiom of what the Japanese, you know, accept in their storytelling is just different from us. Well, I mean, I feel just, like this is one of like Brandon Graham's favorite images. Uh, or something, right. right? <laughs> think about what it took for him to get like Akira to right. be what it is. So like, you're gonna do that all over again? You no. Know, you know. I, I kept staring at this, and I don't have much to offer, except it's just such a nice detail in an image. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's the a beautiful thing by itself, and then sort of put into the context of this overall poster. And Otomo drew this? Because this is, like, completely different from any I do think he has style a lot of styles. Seen. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, some of this stuff is I love is this not stuff the blown up like this. Like, that's so cool. Scale really helps. He's got a son named Shohei Otomo who um, does ballpoint pen mm, okay. uh, artwork and is incredible. incredible so he stuff. went into the arts too? Yeah, oh okay. yeah, uh, absolutely. Talk about you pressure. Could, you could go to uh, his Instagram and, and check out a lot of cool stuff. I just, uh, you know, I got this uh, thumb drive full of full of anime, man, that's like connected to the TV. And I just, a couple of days ago, hit Robot Carnival because I know that Otomo was associated. That's amazing. Like, thinking of these as like the same movie promo <laughs> yeah. piece. Yeah. Guess he's doing some actual graphic design. Probably art directing these, I would bet. Well, I mean, you know, like we we've kind of gotten into a space where, like, you know, hand drawn illustrated imagery dominates the Look. field, and then it goes away completely, almost. You know, wonder what out. is going on here. Like, this is like three D techniques. Yeah. Um, Man, I'd be curious to look at that with 3D glasses. Now, when this episode airs, that's what I'll be looking at. A little M.C. Escher-inspired uh, Domu piece right uh -huh. here, man. And and you think about the Escher comp component. Remember, we did that video on Fireball and the splash yeah. page. It's like an M.C. Escher piece. Makes total sense. I'm glad you brought that brought that up. Kaba, cover to the first art book. Mm -hmm. Not neither of you have that, right? No. no. Do you think this makes me think of uh, what, hip, hip, hip flask? flask? That was like, my first that's thought. Where that comes I, from? I didn't want to call anybody out. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah. Farewell to weapons. See, in the uh, in the the original treatment for the book, it would have imagery like this, mm -hmm. where he would have it uh, on a television and and uh, take a snapshot. Like it would be these pages, but they would. Look have different. you ever heard him talk about that? Like his thinking behind that? Because I, you know, like I can project ideas, right? He's just super inventive visually, and so that that's something that occurred to him. But I wonder, I wonder what he's chasing. What gave him that idea? There are just little bits in that Australian memories collection that's in English. He introduces every strip, and he mentions that a little bit, but he doesn't get into vast detail. That's, I mean, that's why we have to do the shoot interview. It's also wild to me that he can go from this kind of an illustration to some of the more, comp I mean, t you know. To some of the more complex, intricate stuff. Right. When you see artworks, man. Yeah, there's your Speaking of MC Escher. Escher, yeah. Yeah, that's that uh, front piece for uh, Fireball. And then just getting very graphic. Oh, dude, with a uh, Pantone color. Um... I was going to say, <laughs> this is where to study your flat use of flat color. It's so rich. And then overlaying the color on top of the uh, yeah. blue. Yeah, I mean, look, her uh, eye... Uh, Eyelid is the same mm -hmm. color as the background. So cool. Now this is a book we need to get our hands on. Some some years ago there was the uh, the art exhibition where it showed all of his original pages, and there's a book called Ganga. Like this is the front yeah. cover to it. Yeah, and it's there's so many of these books that I need. It's close to his artist <laughs> yeah. edition, man. I mean that you know there, there's the contrast that I'm talking about from some some simple illustration to something like that. It's just mind-boggling well it's the it's a domu like it's the old man with his mouth open but then you know he's a bunch of other stuff going. like same, I, same with this this is like several covers look there's a fucking watermelon <laughs> like this is a cover you know there's that domu piece it's like an opportunity for him to like revisit old works and then keep working on them like he's adding like if he were to redo domu he might incorporate that aspect to it or something and this is him just doing ad campaigns his color is really beautiful 
It really is. Like every every kind of version of it. Yeah, uh-huh. he, he really does push style-wise in a lot of directions. There are uh, two or three anime commercials for these Canon uh, cameras, man, using these characters, and he directs them. Sure. And I think it's probably some of the first uh, animation that he directed, actually. This is neat. So illustration by him is credited. I wonder if he's doing the whole design. I like, you know, I like the lettering. I like that big blue field at the top. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> so much of this is flat color too that you could really take from and apply. I mean, yeah. what's simpler than this? It's two right. colors, but it's just striking. He's a unicorn. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. You don't you don't get very many of these kind of creators in a generation. And then in the back, we get the slightest little bit of of English, uh, kind of talking about some of the different the different pieces in here. Get your magnifying glass out. But yeah, sure. But still, pretty superficial. Like it's just like, please just let me ask the question. Like, yeah, let, right. let us ask the questions, man, because we're just not getting to the root of anything, you know. And there's a lot to talk about here. This is a nice. This looks like it's um. Co- information on each of the posters or at least maybe each of the major campaigns or whatever we've looked at i always appreciate whenever these art books do this yeah little something let me let me see at least some context for what i'm looking at yeah a little something anyhow man you guys asked and uh you shall receive man this is the book that you can run out and get for i don't know about 40 bucks that's of that's as of right now uh the subscribers to the cartoonist kayfabe youtube channel obviously get first dibs over there at amazon so who knows if it's even available <laughs> What's anymore. under the dust jacket? Huh. What are we looking at here? Uh, just some of the Train work in station. the wild. Some of the work in the wild, man. It, it, it's exhausting to me to look at a book like that. Like, <laughs> right. I feel like my eyes are just wiped out after that. Uh, it should be a good night of sleeping where uh, you know dreams are informed by putting this kind of stuff into your brain. Man, if we That's if great. we had it to do over again, this would have been the video, the background for the video. Little still shots from the Akira anime. Very fun. And this is about the amount of time you get to see Akira in the actual thing. Uh-huh. Good to go if you guys are. Yeah. Okay, favors like follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. You can download out of print zines, mini comics, collections of my drawings. You can see original art, scripts process of how i make the comics i make at patreon.com slash jim rug uh, jack kirby the epic life of the king of comics fantastic four grand design check out my patreon go to patreon.com search tom Scholey, and check out my youtube channel total recall show red room comics in the wild the first uh, season of red room comics is complete man four issues of the anti-social network are on the stands as we speak go to your local comic shop scoop those things up Order them from the Fantagraphics website or hit up my Patreon to read them digitally. Uh, all those links in my link tree in the description below this video. Jimmy, what else? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them those merchant orders, man, and we're going to be on our way. Read more manga.